Well, good evening, everyone. Well, first, let me compliment all the, the seniors. You are all seniors here, correct? <laughs> and not for the front row. I think you're a little past that, but. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, maybe they could be seniors, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, welcome Mr. Dela Cruz's class. And, uh, and thank you so much for being here. You're welcome at any time, and any time the city can, uh, uh, can facilitate anything to, uh, to talk about government for you, please let us know. Mr. Dela Cruz. You know how I feel about you. I, just, I think you're a wonderful teacher, and, and, and uh, thank you. Thank you so much for being here this evening. Thank you for having us. Hey. Is that okay, Mr. Attorney? Can I say that without any problem? Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right. All right, so let's, let's go on to, uh, I'd like to call forward Bobby Contreras from our Father's House for the opening prayer. Bobby? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's an honor. Last, last month, I was here representing our, our company, Paradise. And today, I'm here representing the church and our Heavenly Father. So it's truly my, my, uh, my privilege. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day of life, Father. We're so joyful for life and life abundance, Father to God, that you give to us, Father God. And I'm thank you for this, for this meeting here today, Father. Uh, representing you and asking for your presence to come, Father God, amongst these leaders who are before me, future leaders who are behind me. Uh, Father God, it's always a good thing when young, young men uh, and young women are going to rise up and become the leaders that you've called them to be, Father God. We pray, Father God, for uh, wisdom. We know that there's, there's wisdom in a council of many, and we thank you for the council uh, men and women that are here today. You poured out your count, your wisdom upon them. We thank you for our mayor, Father God, who loves the city of Los Banos and loves the people as well, Father. We ask uh, your blessings upon this meeting, blessings upon this city, blessings upon the city workers and everybody that's here, Father. And Father God, we pray even for the schools. We, as these young people are behind me, Father God, they represent the schools. So we pray your hedge of protection upon our high schools, our junior high schools, and our grammar schools, Father. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody agreed. They said? Amen. 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 Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. I'd like to call the meeting uh, to order the uh, December 5th meeting of the Los Banos City Council. And Chief, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Could I have everyone stand, please? All right. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And uh, roll call in the final form of this council tonight. Director Malney? Maria? Here. Yeah. Johnson Santos? Here. Lewis? Here. Silvera? Present. Peralta? Here. Consideration of approval of agenda. And Mr. Silvera, would you make the motion, please? Yeah, I'm glad to make the motion. Okay. Get that. Do I have a second? Mr. Faria. I'll second. Go ahead. I'll second that motion. Thank you. Okay, I have a motion by Silvera and second by Faria to approve the agenda stated. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? None carried. Consideration of certification of vote of municipal, munis, municipal election November 6, 2018. Item 5A. City Council Resolution Number 60. Two, four. Certifying results of the Merced County general election held in the city of Los Vanos on November 6, 2018, as it pertains to the election of the mayor, city council members for districts two and three, city clerk and city treasurer. Uh, should we do these individually? Yeah. Okay. So uh, do I have a motion pertaining to 5A? Mrs. Lewis. 
Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to adopt res resolution number 6024 as submitted. Mr. Silvera. I will second. Motion by Lewis, second by Silvera, to, appro to approve City Council Resolution Number 6024. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? None carried. Item 5B, City Council Resolution Number 6025. Certifying results of the Merced County General Election held in the City of Los Vanos on November 6, 2018, as it pertains to Measure H, Los Vanos Essential City Services Measure. Uh, 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 direct, or super, or, God. Uh, let's try Council Member Lewis, or Santos. Thank you. I'd like to approve the resolution number 6025. Okay, Mrs. Lewis? Second. Okay, motion by uh, Johnson Santos, second by Lewis, to approve City Council resolution number 6025. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? None. Carried. Administration of oath of office to elected officials. Item 6A, Mayor Michael Villalta, Council Members Tom Faria, District 2, and Brett Jones, District 3, City Treasurer Kim Tomas. So could I have the following individuals please come forward. Okay, item number seven, roll call. Okay, I'll give you. <laughs> Faria. Here. Johnson Santos. Here. Jones. Here. Lewis. Volalta. Here, we do have a quorum. Item number eight, presentations. City Council resolution number 6026, a resolution of commendation to Scott Silvera. Mr. Silvera, where are you? Okay. All right. <laughs> let me let me make sure so before we get that first. Council member. Wait a minute, do I need a microphone? Is it working? Okay. 
whereas Scott Silvera was elected as a city council member of Los Banos on November 4th, 2010. Whereas Scott Silvera has faithfully served the city of Los Banos and its city council for eight years as a city council member. And by his devotion to his duties, Scott Silvera has greatly contributed to the governmental process of the city of Los Banos. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the city council and the city of Los Banos that it hereby expresses its sincere gratitude and appreciation to Scott Silvera for his service to the city of Los Banos and his capacity of city council member. Be it therefore resolved that the embossed copy of this resolution be presented to Scott Silvera. The foregoing resolution was adopted at its regular city council meeting of the city council of the city of Los Banos held on December 5th, 2018 by the following affirmative vote. Mike Villalta, Tom Faria, Deborah Lewis, Deronica Johnson Santos, and Brett Jones, council member. And I'm sorry that I got my backs to the folks behind me, but I did have a few notes and I wanted to make sure that I got through everything. So first off, I'd like to say is, is thank you to the citizens of Los Banos. Um, for the past eight years, you've honored me um, by electing me to, to represent you here at the city of Los Banos. Um, I want to thank all the city employees. We have a group of hardworking, dedicated individuals that have helped keep this city going. I can remember when I got elected in 2010, um, things weren't looking so great in the city of Los Banos. Um, we, were, we had just come through the worst economic times that I've ever experienced in my lifetime, um, one of the hardest hit housing economies in the country. And it was kind of hold on for the ride because there really wasn't a lot of excitement. It was not a matter of what we were going to cut. It was, it was how much and, and how were we going to be able to sustain. So to the citizens that did give backs before I got here, I mean, to the employees, I want to say thank you for bearing with us and helping us get through those lean times. And I didn't coin the phrase, but somebody in staff did, is, is that the city of Los Banos is healthy. We're not wealthy. So, and we're, we've been able to, through um, what I'd like to consider to be strong fiscal policy, not spending more money than we make, we were able to get through those lean times. So again, to the staff, to the department heads, I wanna thank you. Um, department heads, um, I'm leaving you guys having made a bunch of new friends. And uh, it's these relationships that I won't forget. And I just wanna say thank you. And so to all of you sitting here, thank you guys. Thank you for, um, listening to some of my nonsense and when I would go off on tangents, thank you for being um, very, very quick into getting your responses back to me so that I could get responses back to my citizens and, and all of you are here tonight. And so thank you guys for that. And then I just wanted to share a few memories of League of Cities. We would go to League of Cities conferences and um, I think I wanna tell Brett this, go to these conferences because it's not only the sessions that you go to that you learn valuable information, it's networking with other city council members across the state, but it's also getting to spend time with your, your, your department heads and getting to know them outside the confines of the office and getting to know about their families and, and how they think. And so it just makes for a better relationship. So I'm getting a little nervous and I don't know why. Um, so I just wanna say is, is I learned things that, that Sonia loves um, Dick's Last Resort in San Diego. Bill loves when people share their desserts. And um, again, Brett, I just want to tell you that it's, it's important that you go. Deronica, I got to spend one with you. I would encourage everybody to take advantage of those. And then Lucy, just thank you for loving the journey, okay? And so all kidding aside, what I do want to say is, is I've, I've had the fortune of representing my hometown and now going on to supervisor, my hometown just got a little bit bigger. So I'm still gonna be here, I'm still gonna be representing you folks, but thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, before we go on, um, we have one housekeeping item to take care of, and I'll do it from here. On City Council Resolution number 6026, a resolution of, a resolution of commendation to Scott Silvera. Do I have a motion, please? Moved, Moved by Mr. Freya. Second. Second by Mrs. Lewis. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Jerry, come forward. I have to tell you that this man has uh, been in office longer than Lincoln. <laughs> Don't tell lies either. <laughs> but I have to tell you that he's been a fine representative for the West Side, District 5, for how many years, Jerry? 28. 28 years. 28 years. I was still in high school. <laughs> 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 yeah, you're right, I wasn't. <laughs> uh, I sincerely would like to read this proclamation recognizing the retirement of Jerry O'Banion. Whereas Jerry O'Banion was born and raised in Dos Palos, California, and graduated from Dos Palos High School in 1964. Whereas in 1969, Jerry O'Banion received his Bachelor of Arts degree in General Sciences and Agricultural Education and credential from Fresno State University. And whereas Jerry O'Banion served as a council member for the city of Dos Palos from 1980 to 1987 and served as mayor from 1987 to 1990. As one of the longest serving members of the Merced County Board of Supervisors, Jerry O'Banion has represented District 5, the West Side communities, for seven consecutive terms since 1990, and said it was an honor and a privilege to represent the community in which he grew up. And whereas Jerry O'Banion will enjoy his retirement spending time with his wife, Dolly, who's from Las Vanas, their children and grandchildren, and says he will continue to stay active in the community. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the mayor and the city council members of the city of Los Vanos do hereby commend Jerry O'Banion on the 28 years of dedicated service to Merced County as District 5 supervisor and congratulate and wish him well in his retirement. Scotty um, took my speech, <laughs> but that's okay. I'm gonna go over to the side so I can see everyone. Is this on? Yes. Okay. Yes, I wanna thank the mayor for the recognition and make sure and call Scotty when you need something because my number is going to be unlisted <laughs> January 7th. Scotty takes over January 7th at noon. I leave office on January 7th at noon. It's been a great ride. It's been great to represent Los Banos and Dos Palace. And there's been a lot of experiences. As far as on the Board of Supervisors, I've served with 17 different individuals on that board. So think about the number of folks that you serve with over here. Probably a couple less than that. But there's a, there's a, there is also five on our board, so it's not like a school board. Um, there's been I, probably probably one of the, the biggest accomplishments that I think that I was involved in was the moving of the Merced County line. Six square miles of Fresno County became Merced County back in 2002. It took 12 years to work on that with the help of uh, county administration 
and um, to bring in, and I don't know if you're familiar with it, but Bryant Junior High School in Dos Palos was out in Fresno County. And I had worked with three different supervisors from Fresno County to try to get that accomplished and wasn't getting anywhere. But you know what broke it loose? Emergency services. The emergency services for, for Bryant School has to come out of Fresno because it's in Fresno County. And a young man broke his leg and, and Riggs Ambulance, which is the Merced County service, immediately was out there and, and took care of the young man. But he couldn't be transported because he had to go clear to Fresno. He, he laid there in Fresno County for four hours before the ambulance finally from Fresno came out and picked him up and took him in. And the next day, the supervisor from that district of Fresno County called me and said, let's get it done. And that is basically what took it and made it to where it became a reality. Now, it wasn't an easy thing to do because it took state legislation from the state of California to get approval for that. So I think that's probably one of the, the most important things that um, I was able to accomplish in the 28 years that I was on the board. There was a lot of good times and there was a lot of bad times, but overall, and, and uh, Scotty had mentioned something about the economic downturn. Well, we went through three different economic downturns while I was on the board. And probably the, first, the worst one was 1992. Any of you born after 1992? But some of you maybe, but... Um, we closed, we vote, I voted to close libraries. And I couldn't believe that I did that. But you know what we did? We turned around and the money that we saved, we're going to save on not having the employees come to work in the libraries. We paid the electrical bills with that money and turned around and volunteers took over the library system here in Merced County and operated it for two and a half years. And finally, we started getting back out of the, the, uh, the downturn and were able to come back. And uh, everybody talks about the 1980s, 83, I believe it was, was the highest level of the library system that Merced County have. And I'm happy to say that we are back to those levels and a little higher today. And in addition, we've even looking at going into the uh, bookmobiles. We have one. We're looking at getting one additional so we can take the library out to the different communities that don't have the service. I'm very proud of all the things that I was involved in over the years. And um, I've served with several mayors of the city of Los Banos. And I've first served with uh, several mayors from the city of Dos Palos. And I even had Gustine in my district at one time. But that was a miserable time because Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, I went to Dos Palace, Los Banos, and got, excuse me, Gustine, Dos Palos, and Los Banos City Council meetings. Every one of them in those days. Now, I'm, I've been neglectful, Mayor, since you've been here, to be honest with you, as far as on getting to them. I get to some of them, but not all of them. But I want to thank all the people in, in um, Los Banos that have been uh, supporters of mine over the years. And... I wish Scotty well. I think he's uh, qualified to do the job. Now it's up to him to do that job. And uh, I wish him well, and hopefully he'll have uh, 28 years there also, or more. And, and one last thing. There is one additional person in Merced County. He, he's no longer alive, but he served for 28 years um, in District 4, and that is Harry Schmidt from... Gustine, and he, he served 28 years also. So it's not a new thing in Merced County. Again, thank you, and thanks for the opportunity to come and receive this uh, plaque from the city of Los Banos.
All right. Let's go on to item nine. Reorganization of the City Council. Selection of Mayor Pro Tem. At this time, I would like to bring forth the name of Deronica Johnson Santos as our new Mayor Pro Tem for this year. Can I have a second, please? Mr. So, oh, wait a minute. We're gonna, we have to go to Mr. Jones. Would you like to make the second? Yes. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. So it's been motioned by the mayor and second by Council mm -hmm. Member Jones to approve Deronica Johnson Santos as our new mayor pro tem. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? None carried. Do you accept? I, do. I should probably should ask that first, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, hey, let's go on to item 10, public forum. Members of the public may address the city council members on any item of interest that is within the jurisdiction of the city council, which includes agenda and non-agenda items. No action will be taken on non-agenda items and speakers are limited to a five minute presentation. Detailed guidelines are posted on the council chamber informational table. When you approach the podium, please state your name and city of residence. And I remind those, if you have a cell phone, please uh, place them on vibrate or turn them off. Okay, is there anyone who would like to speak at the public forum? Good evening, my name is Donald D'Souza, a resident of Los Banos. First, I wanna congratulate uh, Scotty for his new position. I think he'll be wonderful at it. He's gonna have some big boots to fill. <laughs> but um, also, thank you to Mr. Jan Jerry O'Banion, he's done a wonderful job over the years. I remember him sitting here in this council, and what I admire about him, it doesn't matter if you like his ideas or not, he's always going to speak his mind, and I think that's wonderful. I, you know, He's always fought for our city and got a lot done, so thank you very much for all you're, you've done. Um, I'm here because I, well, there's a couple things, but one of them is I watched one of the council meetings where people are really upset in our town about this housing boom that's going on, and I heard Mr. Vallalta turn to Mrs. Uh, Elms and ask, is that not true that our council doesn't have anything to do with it, though they were already on the books? And she answered, truthfully, they were on the books, and they are. But what Mr. Uh, or Mayor is not saying is that he's approving them right now. They're coming forward because they're expired. So now the current council has to approve them. It's up to them to approve them how many are going to go through and what they're going to pay, the new fees or the old fees. So you are, in a sense, responsible for the housing, that problem that's going on now because the houses have been there for 10 years, but they're coming forward to your council. So it's up to you. Um, our schools are overcrowded, and I know you're going to say we can't slow it down because of housing, but you can't slow it down because of police, fire, and infrastructure, and all those exist. Uh, our police is overwhelmed, and in fact, today at Miano, we had people almost getting hit. It was so overwhelming, and you call them, and they come right away. They are wonderful. It doesn't matter if, how many cops they have on duty. They come to any school, and they patrol, and they help. They've helped us several times, and we really appreciate that. But we need to start thinking about our city and not keep this big boom going on. I don't understand how you people can just keep it going. You don't think about what our future. We can't get up and down the highway. A few years ago, that came up about the highway, and Mr. Faria brought up that we know how to get around our town. Well, guess what? So is everybody else now. Everywhere you go in this town, we can't get from one side of town that quick. Um, I'm not here to criticize anybody. I just need you to please look at everything. You don't have to keep putting everything through. You're here to make good decisions. These children right here can't even get a job in this town. That's all we're getting is houses. I mean, the infrastructure matters too. And so you need to please look at, it, at this stuff. Uh, there's houses on the way out of town behind 7-Eleven as you go to Stevenson. My daughter was looking for a house, and she told me, and I went to look, and I couldn't believe. The driveways, you can't even fit a whole car in it. We have Miss Lewis saying we can't have more than two cars. You can't even fit one car in that driveway. So how is that getting by you? I don't understand. How is that getting by you? You're, you're putting sidewalks over by the baseball field. They're not even in the lighting district. They don't even pay fees. We pay fees. Why doesn't everyone pay fees? I know for a fact some of the cities have put old residents into the lighting district so they can all pay fees. You should look at that. Put it on the ballot. You know, everyone should pay fees. You, they all get their, suites, their streets swept. They get their trees trimmed, they get their parks trimmed, they get the same stuff we get, but they don't pay fees. So you're building sidewalks over there now. 
They got those houses cheap years ago. Look at what, how they got them. It was when the, the dam was being built. They, some of them were $12,000. If whoever wanted sidewalks got sidewalks, the other ones did not. If you notice, there's pieces of sidewalks here and there. So that is why. And so now you're going to put sidewalks. They don't pay any fees. Why not put them in the lighting district, have them pay fees, and then bring that in? I understand you're getting from a certain uh, tax that was already on there, but we're putting taxes too. We're putting into lighting district, and then some of us going into general fund. You just please look at all this stuff. You know, you need to, when you make these decisions, don't just make them and not look at the background and how that came about. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone else who would like to speak at the public forum? Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council staff. I'm back again. This is our I'm here, Jim Valentine, resident of Los Banos. I'm here regarding the Kiwanis Club of Los Banos and our annual Christmas Eve dinner in conjunction with the fire department. Uh, just reminding people that we're doing it again this year. Um, it's, like I said, it's our 35th year. Uh, dinner will be served on the 24th. And quite honestly, I don't even know what day of the week that is. Uh, we forget days of the week with this time of the year. Uh, dinner is from 11 to 2. Uh, we'll have our traditional barbecue chicken, pasta, salad, roll, pie, and beverage. Santa will come and visit feeding 12 and 1. Uh, the dinner is free to all, thanks to the many generous individuals and organizations and businesses in our community. I'd ask Chief Breezy if you see anybody on the street that day, Looking for a meal, send them over to the fire station. Mason wants to keep busy. Um, anybody that needs a meal can give me a call at 769-6703. And um, I've already talked to city manager. There will be flyers in the lobby of the city uh, hall talking about our dinner. And you've already committed to driving, so I appreciate that, delivering dinners. Uh, hopefully we're not going to lose Jerry after this dinner he's been there for maybe 25 or 28 of those years he cooks a mean chicken thank you very much thank you and uh the 24th is a monday <laughs> okay <laughs> is there anyone else who wishes to speak at the public forum not seeing or hearing anyone i will now close the public forum and we will go on to Consideration of approval of consent agenda. Items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and will be voted on in one motion unless removed from the consent agenda by a city council member. And tonight we have Director Maloney. Items on the consent agenda are as follows. Warrant number 718 dollars and 44 cents city council resolution number 6027 approving a boundary map and declaring its intention to annex property to the city of los banas community facilities district number 2002-01 public safety services and to levy a special tax therein to finance certain public safety services for such community facilities district Shaughnessy Village, a subdivision of approx approximately 31.9 acres located east of Mercy Springs Road and north of Scripps Drive. And City Council Resolution number 6028, rejecting the bids for one new 2018-2019 model brush chipper. And the items are to be approved as submitted. Okay. Is there any City Council member who would like to remove an item for discussion? If not, do I have a motion? Mrs. Lewis. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to approve the uh, consent agenda as submitted. Mrs. Santos. Second. Motion by Lewis, second by Santos, to approve the consent agenda as stated. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? None carried. Item number 12, public hearing. If you challenge the proposed action as described herein in court, 
you may be limited to raising only those issues you or someone else raised at the public hearing described herein or in written correspondence delivered to the city at or prior to the public hearing. Item 12A, public hearing, to receive public comment and disclose the final funding amounts and accomplishments of the 2015 Community Development Block Grant CDBG Agreement 10567. And we're going to go to our Community and Economic Development Director, Elms. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and City Council. Um, so this is going to be a closeout report for our 2015, <coughs> excuse me, 2015 CDBG program. Uh, so if we can put on that PowerPoint presentation. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, good. Yeah, perfect. Didn't even touch it. Uh, so just a little bit of background on this particular item. Uh, it's a CDBG program, and CDBG stands for Community Development Block Grant, and it authorizes the use of funds to assist low- and moderate-income families or aid in the pre prevention or elimination of slums or blight. The funding is allocated to the state from the Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, so that's from the federal level, uh, the funds are then distributed to the various states. And then this particular program is administered by the state, the California State Department of Housing and Community Development, which is known as HCD. So this particular grant, uh, CDBG grant, Community Development Block Grant, has um, certain criteria in order for a community to be eligible or for that activity that the grant is for to be eligible. So it's three national objectives have to be met. Um, well, it's actually one of the three have to be met. So first, it needs to benefit low-income persons or households. It needs to eliminate slum and blight, or it can be for an urgent need, and that urgent need, need needs to be handled in real time. Um, so, for example, say there's an earthquake and there's damages um, and there's funds that are needed for a specific community, um, even fires can um, be eligible for an urgent need. So back in 2015, the city of Los Banos applied for a community development block grant funding for a public service activity, and that was for code enforcement. We are, were awarded in September of 2015 a contract for $322,500. The funded contract was for code enforcement officer, and this was for a contract code enforcement officer. It was to be utilized in designated low and moderate income areas. In the next slide, I'm going to show you where that area was. And we had to meet the national objective of the prevention and elimination of slum or blight in a specific low to moderate income area. So this is the map. Um, that specific area was bound by Pacheco Boulevard, Badger Flat Road, H Street in Wilmot, and Mercy Springs Road. It consists of a specific census tract um, that is designated for low and moderate income. So the closeout report, we are required um, by HCD, so Housing and Community Development, to provide a closeout report and hold a public hearing. We do provide a semi-annual program income report and an annual performance report that we do yearly. Um, and this closeout report summarizes all of the grant activities and it is required, like I said, by HCD prior to submittal of our closeout uh, for this particular activity. So just a summary of this particular grant, um, grant 15 CDBG-10567 has been active since fiscal year 2016-17. The program income funds um, were spent, and that was $52,713. We were required to spend that program income prior to requesting any reimbursement from CDBG, and that was because that was program income that we had uh, received and accumulated from other CDBG programs. Uh, then the city expended $300,000 under a professional service agreement with CSG Consultants, Inc. That was the contract code enforcement um, uh, group that we hired. Uh, we had, if you can recall, um, we 
did a request for proposal. We took bids and um, selected a firm based on those proposals. Then the city received reimbursement in the amount of $22,500 for general administration of the grant. That's staff's time on the grant. And then the total grant award was $322,500 and all funds have been expended to date. And we were required to expend those funds by September 30th, 2018. Uh, the next slide I would like our chief to go over to talk about our accomplishments. to present this to you tonight. The CDBG grant was a uh, needed code enforcement portion of our program to bring a uh, increased level of service to the community of Los Banas. Can, can we bring back. that presentation back up for me, please? Sorry about that. There we go. So uh, as we talk about accomplishments, when we originally brought CSG on, um, the intent with them was to make them perform a lot of the more minor nuisance abatement issues, abandoned vehicles, some minor nuisance things, uh, minor nuisance abatement. As we worked with them, we realized that they were much more technically adept at performing more complex investigations, so we turned them loose on some of the bigger things that we had within the census tract. So in addition to those 1,250 code enforcement investigations that they worked approximately 1,200 of which were close to our satisfaction, which means that we went out, identified municipal code violations. We worked with the owners or the tenants of the property to educate them on what the violation was and then requested that they voluntarily comply. In a vast majority of cases, that's exactly what happened because our code enforcement theme is voluntary compliance. We go out, educate, and the last thing that we want to do with our residents is cite them for a municipal code violation um, underneath uh, our code enforcement efforts. So 1,200 accomplished cases was a good um, number to reach for CSG. The other thing that they did was successfully process 370 abandoned vehicles in Los Banas. Now what an abandoned vehicle is basically is if you've seen a car in your neighborhood that has a flat tire, a uh, damaged windshield that doesn't move, the registration's expired, there's cobwebs underneath the car, there's leaves. Obviously, the car has not been moved in days, weeks, or months. We go out and target those vehicles because they're blight. They reduce the value of your uh, property in your neighborhood. And so we're, we're keen to that, and we try to work as diligent, diligently as we can to accomplish some of those, the removal of some of those vehicles. Some of the bigger accomplishments that we tasked CSG with, um, this is the first and foremost one. We took over our code enforcement efforts back in 2015-ish. This house um, became a problem. It's at the corner of C Street and 7th Street. We <laughs> had a young gentleman with CSG named Gene who worked on it. We ended up issuing the homeowner of this property who lived in New York City over $160,000 worth of violations. The tough part when you deal with residences is that they change hands commonly. They go in and out of perhaps foreclosure. There's, there's lenders that get involved, and that's exactly what we experienced with this home. Um, but right as the grant was closing, we reached out to a lender who had assumed responsibility for that property and uh, explain to them that we'd be, we'd be willing to negotiate the waiver of those citations if they would just clean up the property. And very promptly, they did so. So we're proud to say that uh, we were able to remove that blight property from uh, our residents, our neighborhood there in the area of 7th and C. A second one that we tasked them with was a triplex in the area of the 200 block of West J Street. There is a small building here that you see pictured along with the triplex um, that was in disrepair. It was vacant at the time. It was being vandalized frequently. It was a um, attractive nuisance for homeless and other individuals in that neighborhood. So our CSG representative reached out to the property owner and began a dialogue with them. And we're proud to say that that home has been repaired, doors have been replaced, windows have been replaced, and the biggest change, this is one of the um, photographs of just one of the units in the triplex. The entire property now has been 
cleaned up. They have tenants in the uh, all three of the um, units now. That used to be two carports. It's now three enclosed garage doors, the new cinder block fence, windows have re been replaced. We have vital revitalized that uh, complex there. And prior to doing that, we spent a lot of time on the patrol side, putting out fires, literally putting out fires from transient encampments, running people off because we were trying to keep that property as best we could minimizing the nuisance behavior because the tenants around that property were affected by what was going on. So we're really pleased with how that property owner voluntarily complied with our request to improve that property. A third one was in the 200 block of I Street. This is a before photograph of it. It had been abandoned. abandoned. Uh, we went out and we do inspections through our code enforcement efforts. We use the building department, the fire department. We team up commonly with those three, uh, our three departments. We go out and we do inspections and we were able to get the property owner to voluntarily comply to improve that property. They have done so. This was a mid-project photograph. Um, they have now completed that um, upgrade of that property. The house is back down off of the stilts. There's a cement foundation. It's been painted. And I believe there is a tenant in that property currently. Third, um, we took on the process of going out and identifying, I think it was six initially, six multi-unit residences in Los Banas in the area just north of the hospital. Uh, code enforcement building and fire went out and did inspections. They identified substandard areas on the exterior of these, in, these properties. And we set forth a path with the property management company and the property owners to repair some of those uh, facilities. And we're pleased, we're not done, but we're pleased with the progress that we have. Uh, it's hard to tell in this picture, but the roof is um, in disrepair. In one of the rain gutters, they'd use some form of spray on or um, paint on um, roofing material to prevent the leaks, and it, it was very unsightly. So they have since repaired those areas. There's another complex just on the other side of that to the north of that property. They can't, you can't see in the photograph, but it too has had a repaired roof. They've replaced windows and they have made that environment much more livable for their tenants and the surrounding neighborhood. Uh, this is a hotel on Pacheco Boulevard that our, we turned our code enforcement attention to um, after receiving a lot of complaints about the property. Currently, that entire hotel is closed off. There's two portions of that. It's kind of a V-shape on the western edge of it. There's a single story. It's five or six apartments, excuse me, hotel rooms on the western edge. And then you see this uh, two-story portion of it here on the eastern edge. They have almost completed the work on the western edge, the single story side, new stucco, new doors, new windows, uh, new interior. Uh, making the, the property much more appealing, and they are uh, working on the eastern edge, this piece of the property currently. So uh, the entire complex is fenced off, and they're doing improvements to it. So we're really proud of those efforts. The biggest part with our code enforcement grant that um, is a necessity in order to accomplish, the, accomplish these goals is the resource of people being basically tenacious about everything that they do and going back out and back out and back out, communicating um, an ongoing dialogue with the property owner or the tenant to improve their property. Um, and like I said, we're just, we're happy and we're very pleased with the outcome of that project because we have affected a number of properties in our community and made them better. We've improved the situation. And that is all I have for the presentation. Um, we are considering filing for another CDBG grant for uh, code enforcement in the upcoming NOFA that will be closing, I think, in March or February. opening in March, February. 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 So we'll see. It's a it's a big project, uh, but it's it's definitely useful in our community. Any questions? No, I just want to personally thank you for the uh, uh, for uh, you know upgrading a lot of these properties. It's uh, it's only going to make Los Banos a better place to live, and we have more to do. And uh, it's we've passed uh, ordinances now to where if, if someone has four apartments or more, they're going to get a mandatory inspection. They're going to make sure that people 
deserve or they do live in a, in a place that is habitable. And all you government students that are sitting out there, if you see something that you feel is not right, where someone's living in a place that's substandard, let your teacher know or call us. Because everyone deserves to live in a place that's fitting for them and for their children. So the only way we can improve is to have people report to us deficiencies. And it's like anything, if, if we don't know about it, sometimes the owners are just going to collect rent and they're not going to let, uh, <clears throat> and they're not going to, uh, to make these improvements until someone calls them on it. So as you're growing up, and those of you who remain in Los Banos, help us out. It's very important. And Chief, I can't tell you enough how, how proud I am of, of, of what you've done and what you're going to do. And, and as we, we go on, we're going to make even more improvements to this community uh, where, uh, where uh, everyone is going to have a fitting place to live. And if they don't, then the owners are going to pay for it, and they're going to make sure that it is. Council members, any other comments I'd like to make? Yes. Mrs. Lewis? Thank you. Um, I also would like to thank our chief, our code enforcement department, and the organization that we received the CDBG grant for uh, to take care of these issues and problems. Uh, as I was watching the presentation, most of those violations were in the district that I represent. So I'm really, really happy to see that uh, people are able to live in something less than substandard. Uh, everyone deserves to live in housing that's suitable. So again, congratulations to everyone who worked on this, and uh, my hat's off to you for the hard work that you did. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank okay. you. Um, I'm going to go back to uh, Director Elms, because she has a little more to say. Director Elms? Yep, so just to wrap this up and, and to um, satisfy the requirements of uh, the CDBG grant, we do have to have um, a public hearing. We do need to hold a public hearing. And a public hearing notice was published in the Lost Man's Enterprise on November 23rd, 2018. And as of today's date, no comments have been received. Um, but I am um, asking that the city council would open the public hearing and receive any feedback from the community on this particular grant. And there is also a sign-in sheet. So please sign in, students. You'd be you're very welcome to please sign in. Uh, that way we can report back to CDBG that we held this public hearing and we had lots of students in attendance. Uh, so with that, staff is recommending that the city council open the public hearing, receive public comment and feedback on uh, this particular CDBG grant, and close the public hearing so that staff can report back to CDBG HCD. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So at this time, item 12A, public hearing to receive public comment and disclose the final funding amounts and accomplishments of the 2015 Community Development Block Grant CDBG Agreement 10567. And no action is to be taken, but we are opening a public hearing. Is there anyone who would like to speak on this item? Not seeing or hearing anyone, I will now close the public hearing, bring it back to council level. And again, there is no action to be taken on this item. All right, let's go on to 12B, public hearing. To receive public comment consideration of adopting an ordinance to amend and reorganize Article 20, Chapter 3, Title 9 of the Los Angeles Municipal Code relating to off-street parking and amend and reorganize Article 32, Chapter 3, Title 9 of the Los Angeles Municipal Code relating to recreational vehicles. And we're going to go to uh, Community and Economic Development Director Elms again. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. So I do have a PowerPoint presentation for this one as well. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to go into um, a lot of detail on this particular item. It's just going to be a brief overview um, as this is the second reading for this particular ordinance. And it was originally presented uh, to the City Council um, actually back in October. Uh, but the first reading was on November 7th. The City Council waived the first reading of this ordinance and introduced ordinance number 1165 by title. 
So just a brief overview um, of what this particular ordinance does. It defines what a driveway is, what an approved driveway is, and what an improved parking area is. It requires a simple zoning clearance certificate to ensure that um, residents are complying with this new um, ordinance, uh, which would be free to the residents. It requires an encroachment permit if the property owner is utilizing or accessing uh, their property other than their existing driveway or curb cut. So if they're accessing their property um, without using their uh, driveway, then they're gonna need an encroachment permit to put a driveway. It prohibits parking on unpaved surfaces and it allows the use of existing gravel driveways as a non-conforming use. And as I had previously discussed, this is to grandfather older uh, residents that um, weren't constructed with a driveway originally. Uh, it is, uh, this particular ordinance, um, parking can only occur on a paved driveway or an improved parking area, so it designates where parking can be. It limits front yard parking to a maximum of 50% of the front yard, and it has to be on an improved surface. It allows parking in side yards that meet the definition of an approved paved driveway or an improved parking area. And it allows parking in backyards that meet the definition of a paved driveway or improved parking area. And it limits the number of vehicles allowed to be parked in a backyard to three. Um, it's been revised to limit one vehicle to exceed the height of the fence line to a maximum of 12 feet and six inches. So if three vehicles are allowed, only one can exceed the height of the fence up to a max of 12 feet, six inches. It maintains the current regulation of a five foot side yard setback and a rear yard setback, as well as the front yard uh, setback. And it allows the code, uh, excuse me, the community and economic development director to approve minor adjustments uh, with certain regulations. And it also provides an appeal process to the planning commission. So with that overview, um, staff is recommending that the city council open the public hearing, receive public comment, waive the second reading, and adopt ordinance number 1165 by title. And that concludes my presentation. Okay, thank you. Okay, this is the second reading. We've already um, had uh, one reading, then a revision and brought back uh, for, the, uh, uh, for the introduction. And now tonight is the, uh, the second reading. Uh, I'll remind everyone that uh, when, uh, for the, the class members that are here tonight, uh, these ordinances are living documents. And living documents mean that they can be taken and they can be brought back at any time and they can be uh, uh, revised if they're not working correctly. So, uh, so I remind you that when we pass an ordinance, this goes into law so many days after we pass the ordinance and then it becomes the, the law of the land in the city of Los Banos only. And then if there are revisions that are needed later on, then those revisions can come back. And just like the, the previous uh, statement by, the, uh, by Director Elms and our police chief, these are to help with the, uh, the cleaning up of Los Banos. And, uh, and we are going to continue to work on these ordinances to make sure that, uh, that they are uh, stiff enough where, where people are not gonna get away with, with having trash in front of the yard or old abandoned cars. So this is a start for this ordinance. And so at this time, I would like to open up the public hearing on ordinance number 1165, if there's anyone wishing to speak. Is this on? You are now. Okay. Uh, number one, I would like to thank you for looking at these ordinances. I think they're too loose now and what's being approved. Uh, 
I encourage all of the city council to drive around and look. I see recreational vehicles on there. I see nothing about boats parked in driveways that are not covered and very seldom are moved. And I would like to see, also I met with the Code Enforcement Administrator, Dana, and I understand that there are two full positions available. I think one is filled, one is not, and there's also a sergeant in the police department who oversees or uh, helps enforce uh, doing the code enforcement. But I think you need to fully hire two people to go around and look for code violations. Uh, it's getting a little bit out of hand. I'm a boat owner. I choose not to park my boat in my driveway because I don't want my neighbors having to come out of their house and see it. it Cost me $700 a year to store my boat in a storage facility here in town. And we have two other, two other people in our area that have, I know they have rec recreational vehicles or large trailers. They store them also. But you can see those around town. Some are probably legally parked and some are not. But I just encourage you to keep our town cleaner, better looking for everyone to enjoy. I appreciate the fact that you're updating this code and I hope once you've done that, that you will continue to look at this code and look around our town and make sure that it doesn't get any worse than it is now. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming forward. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak at the public forum or the public hearing on this item? Not seeing or hearing anyone, I will now close the public hearing and bring it back to council level. Ordinance number 1165, amending and reorganizing article 20, chapter three, of Title IX of the Los Banos Municipal Code relating to off-street parking, amending and reorganizing Article 32, Chapter 3 in Title IX of the Los Banos Municipal Code relating to recreational vehicles. This is a second reading and an adoption, so we are going to have two motions, receive the staff report, which we've just done, open a public hearing, which we've done, and now we received our public comment, we've closed the public hearing, and we are going to now have two Two, uh, 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 two things that we need to do in order to adopt this, uh, this resolution, excuse me, this ordinance. And we have to waive the second reading and then we have to adopt the ordinance as submitted. In the adoption, we have to do a roll call vote, which means each council member will vote individually. For the waiving of the second reading, it will be vote in unison. So at this time, ordinance number 1165, do I have a motion to waive the second reading? Mrs. Lewis. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would like to make a motion to waive the second reading of ordinance number 1165 as read by title. Do I have a second? Mrs. Santos. Second. Motion by Lewis, second by Johnson Santos, to waive the second reading of ordinance number 1165. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? None carried. Mrs. Lewis, would you punch in again, please? Okay. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to adopt ordinance number 1165 as read by title. Mrs. Santos. I second that. It's been motioned by Lewis, second by Johnson Santos, to uh, adopt ordinance number 11665 as read by title. And could we have a roll call vote? Director Maloney. Korea. Yes. Johnson Santos. Yes. Jones. Yes. Lewis yes. Valalta. Yes. Carried unanimously. Let's go on to item C, public hearing. To receive public <coughs> comment consideration of general plan amendment 2018-01, zone change 2018-01, and a negative declaration, uh, SCH number 2018-101013.
for the development of a new police department facility located at 1111 G Street, more specifically identified as assessor parcel numbers 0261610003 and a portion of 0261610008. And Director Elms, are you going to uh, give the presentation? Yes, this yes. is my last presentation for tonight. Well, this is fantastic, <laughs> thank you. So this is an exciting project. Um, so just a little bit of background. Um, our existing police station currently consists of, or actually our police facilities currently consists of two buildings and also accessory buildings, and it's located in our downtown. The main police station was rehabbed in 1969, um, and it's much older actually than 1969. And the police annex was rehabbed in 1999 when the city um, purchased it for the police station, or excuse me, for a police facility. It, we are currently staffed with 41 police officers and 26 non-sworn staff, and we have a robust citizen volunteers group. And we also maintain a type one jail facility uh, that can house up to 20 inmates. So the project before you tonight, um, Staff is proposing to consolidate operations within a new 35,000 or so, plus or minus, square foot building for a new police station. This would include offices, new jail cells, parking, and would house possibly animal control and logistical facilities such as communications. Uh, the primary access would be from G Street and... Under, we are currently undergoing a needs assessment to identify both physical and operational issues of space quality, layout, and de detail. So we're currently undergoing that needs assessment, but as a part of the land acquisition of the property, which is located at 1111 G Street, uh, we're looking at the proposed general plan amendment and zone change before you tonight. So the property, as I said, is located at uh, 1111 G Street. It is just west of um, Mercy Springs and immediately west of the new courthouse, Merced County Courthouse. And it's highlighted for you in yellow. The current zoning is uh, mixed use, uh, general plan designation and rail corridor. Uh, which is the zoning map designation. The purple is uh, the rail corridor zoning designation. Uh, that darker pink color is general commercial and the red is highway commercial. So according to CEQA, the California Environmental Quality Act, an initial study was prepared by EMC Planning Group and the initial study did not identify any potential significant effect on the environment and no substantial evidence that the project would have a significant effect on the environment. So staff prepared a notice of intent for a negative declaration. That notice of intent was posted with Merced County Clerk on October 5th, and was also sent to the California Office of Planning and Research, the State Clearinghouse, also on October 5th, as well as it was noticed in the Los Banos Enterprise and it ran for public review from October 5th to November 5th. We received two comments, two comment letters, one from the San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District, um, which commented on um, the analysis and the methodology that EMC Planning Group used um, to calculate trips per day um, that was reanalyzed and it was determined that there was no significant effect. Um, it, it did satisfy the San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District's comments. And then we also received a comment um, from Chevron Environmental Group, uh, just uh, identifying that there was once an old crude oil line that ran um, parallel adjacent to the old rail line. Um, which is adjacent to this property. Um, and it was just putting the city on notice that should there be any excavating, that there could be a potential for a run-in with the, that old crude oil line. However, that old crude oil line was remediated and removed um, back in the 70s. 
So the proposed uses and density um, before you tonight includes a general plan amendment from mixed use to civic institutional that would allow the use of the police facility um, on the site. Otherwise, if we were to build a police facility without this general plan amendment, uh, we would not be in compliance with our own general plan. And we also need a zone change uh, to designate this property from rail corridor to a public facility. Uh, the analysis includes a look at compatibility of this property with the area and uh, whether the zone change is compatible. And this would be compatible as uh, this area is being developed as a public safety campus and it is already adjacent to complementary uses such as the new courthouse. Uh, public comment. Uh, notices were published in the Las Banas Enterprise and notices were mailed to the 300 foot radius of the project site on November 23rd, 2018. And as I previously stated, two comments were received. That was with the environmental document, not the public hearing notice. And we've addressed those issues. So with that, staff is recommending that the city council uh, open the public hearing and close the public hearing. Um, actually, open the public hearing and then provide a motion of intent to adopt resolution number 6029 to approve negative declaration state clearinghouse number 20181010013 for the Los Banos Police Station facility located at 1111 G Street. And then second, provide a motion of intent to adopt resolution number 6030 to approve general plan amendment number 2018-01 to amend the general plan land use map from mixed use to civic institutional on approximately 3.6 acres located at 1111 G Street. Third, to waive the first reading and introduce by title ordinance number 1167. And this would be to rezone the property from rail corridor to public facility on approximately 3.6 acres located at 11 G Street, 1111 G Street, and then motion to continue the public hearing to December 19th, 2018. And that concludes my presentation. Okay. So, uh, council members, do you have any questions at this time before I open up the public hearing? Okay. All right. So now I would like to open up the public hearing on resolution number 6029 is read by title, resolution number 6030 is read by title, and ordinance number 1167 as read by title. Is there anyone who wishes to speak on any of those items? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing, bring it back to council level, and uh, let's uh, take resolution number 6029 <coughs> first. Mr. Correa. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to move to approve resolution number 6029 as read by title. Okay. Do I have a second? Mrs. Lewis. Okay. Do I have a motion by Faria, second by Lewis to approve resolution number 6029. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? None. Carried. Okay. Mr. Faria. State. Stacey, are they not adopting it and just doing a motion of intent? Because they just adopted it. So should they revise that motion? Got it. Okay, Mr. Freya, motion of intent. I'd Go ahead. I'd like, like to uh, make a motion of intent to adopt resolution number 6030, approving the general plan amendment 2018-001 for the Los Banos Police Station facility to redesignate properties from mixed use to civic institutional located at 1111 G Street, more specifically identified as assessor's parcel numbers 026-161-003 and portion of 026-161-008, and finding that the acquisition of the property is consistent with the city's general plan. Okay, Mrs. Santos. Second that. Second. Okay, it's been motion, or excuse me, yes, it's been motion by Faria as a motion 
of intent to adopt. Resolution number 6030 and seconded by Johnson Santos. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? None. Okay. Mr. Faria, two motions. Very good. Uh, the first motion is the ordinance and the second is to continue the public hearing. Is that correct? Uh, waive the first reading. Right. Waive the first reading introduction and the continuation of the public hearing. Is that included in this? This will yes. be included. Okay. Very good. Um, now the question I have is the waiving of, of the continuing of the public hearing. Should it be included in the first reading or in the introduction, Mr. Vaughn? Okay, very good. So I would move to waive the first reading of ordinance number 1167 as read by title. Okay, do I have a second? Mrs. Lewis. Second. Okay, motion by Faria, second by Lewis to waive the first reading of ordinance number 1167 as read by title. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? None carried. Okay. Let's go back again, Mr. Faria. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Now I'd like to move to introduce ordinance number 1167 and to continue the public hearing to uh, it's December 19th to the December 19th, 2018 meeting. Okay, do I have a second? Oh, here we go. You have to punch in again yes, because um, I have to go through the rotation. Second. Okay, it's been motioned by Faria. Second by Lewis for the introduction of ordinance number 1167 and continuation to the December 19th meeting. And this is a roll call vote. Director Maloney? Faria? Yes. Johnson Santos? Yes. Jones? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Volalta? Yes, carried unanimously. Chief, we are just absolutely excited over this venture because it's taken a long time to get to this point and soon we're gonna have a new police station. So thank you all for all the efforts that everyone has put into this. All right, any other comments by any council member on this item? Okay, let's go on to item 13, advisement of public notices. Community and Economic Development Director Elms. I thought that was your last item. I know, I'm sorry, I forgot okay. about the public notices. Yeah. <clears throat> so we have four items. Um, the first, actually technically five. So we have the first is Sunset Hills Development. Uh, it's uh, what is being proposed is four residential structures in the medium density zoning district. Um, and this is located at 649 and 661 East Street. It's an infill development project. Um, and then also for Sunset Hills, we have a site plan review for an infill development project. Um, this project is located actually downtown at 652 K Street. It's for a mixed use development. It'll have two residential units upstairs and uh, office space on um, the downstairs first floor, totaling 3,192 square feet. And then the third item is for a site plan review for Western Dental. They're proposing to locate in the Highway Commercial Zoning District, um, actually at 1153 West Pacheco Boulevard. This would be between Jack in a Box and the 99 Cent Store on the west end of town. New, and, business, new business? Yep. And okay. um, yes, um, ground up construction okay. of 4,200 square feet. And... Um, a conditional use permit for Hostetler Outdoor LLC, and this is for accessory structures. There's existing billboards, and it's to modify those existing billboards at 3400 East Pacheco Boulevard. And our code requires a conditional use permit for such requests. And then the last um, is a public meeting notice for Thursday, <clears throat> excuse me, December 13th. And this is for the discussion of possible state CDBG application for 2018. So for the Community Development Block Grant application, the notice of funding of availability uh, was uh, published on November 1st, and the application is due February 1st. And so we have to have public outreach to solicit input on this application. Um, this would be for fiscal's, fiscal years, um, 2019 and beyond. 
This will be from July 1st to June 30th. Um, and so that public meeting is going to be held on December 13th at the community center at 6 p.m. The previous public hearings will be held with the planning commission, and that's on December 12th at 7 p.m. here in the council chambers at City Hall. Thank you. Any comment, council members, on uh, anything? Okay. Let's go on to item uh, uh, 14, city manager report. Alex? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, students, thanks for coming. Uh, appreciate you taking the time to be here. Um, I've been go uh, coming to council meetings for over 20 years, and I'm just starting to figure it out. So if it's a little confusing to you, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> it really, it is okay. It's, it's, it, it's a lot to keep track of. Um, count, uh, council Member Silvera, thanks for your service. It's been a pleasure. Uh, uh, Supervisor O'Banion, thank you as well for your service. Uh, Brett, look forward to working with you. Um, I know you've got some great ideas, so look forward to that. Um, Tom and Mike, congratulations to you as well. Um, again, students, welcome, welcome. Thanks for coming. Um, look forward to seeing you, possibly some of you sitting up here in the dais someday, so thanks. Thank you. Hey, let's go on to city council member reports. And tonight, we will start with Mr. Faria. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, congratulations, Mr. Jones. Welcome to the council. Congratulations to everyone who ran. Uh, the election process is highly important, so we all get the discussions out there of what everybody's thinking, and it helps to guide the council uh, as we move forward, and life always moves forward. And if you're not moving forward with life, you're actually moving backwards because everybody's moving forward around you. So you got to make sure you're always moving forward with the world. It's beautiful to see you students here tonight. As a teacher, I, I appreciate when students get involved in stuff. And the more involved you get, and the more interesting it becomes, and, and uh, the more interesting it becomes. That's about the best as I can put it. Uh, when you read those, when you read those uh, on those uh, agenda items, and you see APN numbers, that's the assessor's parcel number. What that is, the, the tax man has a book, and that that tells you which book to look in, what page to look in, and where to look in the book to find that piece of property that you're looking for. And if you go into development and dealing with property at all, you live by APNs. Uh, so it's very important for you to learn how to understand and read those as students in the civics world. Um, Police station, we're very excited about that. Uh, and, uh, we, we brought the courthouse in courtesy of the state, and now we're going to be able to put a police station next to it. So it'll be a, a beautiful uh, judicial center and a good location, excellent location for our city. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, I'm sure the mayor will talk about the Kiwanis dinner that Mr. Valentine mentioned at a Christmas Eve dinner, if you're looking for some public service, an opportunity to do that. A couple more things. Uh, I'll announce our concerts. Uh, next Wednesday night's Los Banos High School Choir, Los Banos High School, and uh, Pacheco High, your choir concerts next Tuesday night. Uh, Mr. Helbling will be doing his there. And then, uh, so next weekend, Los Banos High on the 12th, next week. Then on the 19th is Creekside Junior High, um, which uh, is another council meeting, but I will unfortunately be at that, uh, at that concert directing it. Um, if I weren't there, there'd be no one to direct the concert. So um, we hope to see you around. Friday night is the Christmas parade. Santa Claus comes to town. It's very exciting. And the choirs sing for that. The bands play. People, A lot of people have floats. So we hope to see everybody there at the Christmas parade. All bundled up in a nice cold winter time. Maybe get some nice warm stuff, some nice hot chocolate or something to drink. Thanks for coming again tonight. Hey. Let's go on to Mrs. Santos. Thank you very much. I just want to say it is very nice to see all of you here, whether it's by force or <laughs> if you're actually interested. It's nice to see you here. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're young enough to remember what it was like to be a yeah. <laughs> um, I usually don't have much to say, but I've got a list today. So um, Merced County Behavioral Health and Recovery Services is having an event at the Community Center, community center December 22nd at 3, uh, 3 p.m. It's free dinner. Santa's going to be there. If you guys, <laughs> um, And it's, it's going to be fun. I was there last year, and it was, it was pretty nice. They had a lot to give away. 
Um, I want to thank Mayor Velata for choosing me for Mayor Pro Tem. I will try to do my best in your absence, but I hope you're not absent, if I'm being honest. <laughs> um, and um, I want to congratulate Brett. I'm sure I campaigned at one time, so I know that wasn't easy the walking about and just and just a whole new it's a whole new thing. But you were on planning, so you you had some experience. But I know you'll do well. So um, congratulations to Tom and Mike. I know you guys would do all right, but congratulations nonetheless. Um, and also congratulations to Scott. You're not here anymore, but if you see this later, you've been a uh, big help to me in my uh, council adventures, so thank you. And to uh, Mr. O'Banion, well, congratulations and enjoy retirement. Um, and if we don't see you next week at our, our, our event, Merry Christmas to everyone. And that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Jones. I'd like to thank everybody for their uh, help and support to uh, get to this seat. Um, I don't have much to say, but I look forward to some of the improvements and some of the new businesses that are going to be coming into uh, town here in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, uh, I want to congratulate Brett uh, for your new election and to our mayor and to Tom for re-election. I know it's not easy getting out there uh, campaigning again. I've, I've done it once before and it's a, it's a daunting task. So hats off to you for all the efforts that you made to be reelected. And to Scotty for his new position and also to Jerry for his retirement, uh, time well deserved. Uh, I wanna thank uh, the staff, the mayor and the council for allowing me to serve as mayor pro tem this last year. Um, there were uh, several events that, in the absence of the mayor that I stood in on, uh, on for him on his behalf, and uh, it's always um, uh, a pleasure and an honor to be able to serve in that position. Uh, the mayor has a lot of events that he has to attend, and sometimes uh, he split like a fork in the road, and the mayor pro tem has to step in and, and serve in that position. So thank you again council for allowing me to have that privilege this year. Um, I'm excited also about our new police department and possibly a new animal control department, which uh, is something that um, touches my heart. Uh, so let's move forward on that. And uh, uh, we've looked at some uh, examples of good animal control departments that have uh, been built over the last few years uh, around the valley. and. Um, I'm excited about that, and, and I'm just really hoping that that's going to be part of the agenda as well. Um, I'd like to make a comment um, about some, um, we, we had one person that made comment about some houses that don't pay into Landscape Lighting District, and they're going to be recipients of sidewalks. Um, there was also comment about having an election and making everyone uh, in Los Banos, who's not in landscape lighting district, be a part of that. But as I've been told, and somebody correct me if I'm not stating this correctly, if we do have an election, and if, if we don't receive the proper number of votes or percentage to put everyone in a landscape lighting district, then all landscape lighting districts in the city of Los Banos will go away. So that means that there's no money collected for that, uh, uh, all parks, all medians uh, will not be taken care of, so we'll be in a worse condition. But um, again, these particular houses that are going to be recipients of these sidewalks and curb cutouts are in my district. And I have to say, I'm excited about it. I'm excited because whether it's SB1, Measure V, or whatever other monies that are coming in from state and federal government, to help us put sidewalks and curb cutouts in this district are important to me. And I'm sure they're very important to the council. Um, these homes happen to be built when the dam was being put in. They're over by the Colorado Park area. But just because a house didn't cost a lot of money back in the 50s doesn't mean that people don't deserve the same thing that everybody else has. Uh, it really bothered me and disturbed me 
when I would drive through that district and I would see children walking in the street, avoiding traffic uh, on, on a narrow, it, the street was narrow as it was, and they're avoiding traffic. They have to walk in the streets to get to the bus stops to go to school. So I'm really happy that our public works department has made this a priority this year that those houses are gonna be getting sidewalks and curb cutouts. The children in those areas will be able to walk safely to get to where they need to go, and it will be all the better for the neighborhoods. Those property values will go up as well for having that. There are some people in, that, in the area that have put in sidewalks and curb, um, driveway cutouts on their own uh, because they felt that they wanted that in front of their residents. So now everybody in that area will eventually have the same as everyone else in the city of Los Banos, and that is a sidewalk and a, uh, a cutout for their car, uh, an approach for their car to go into their driveway. So thank you to our public works staff, and I'm thankful for the tax dollars that are coming in to allow us to give these amenities to the residents in Los Banos because those houses are deserving to have such. And lastly, um, I'd like to make an announcement that, I don't know if we can see this on the camera, uh, San Jose State University Choir and Choralers will be coming to Los Banos this coming Sunday, uh, December the 9th at 7 p.m. Uh, to hold a free concert to the community. And the address is at 821 L Street, and that's at New Beginnings Church, which is right across the street from DMV. Uh, this choir, the Core Lears, have uh, sung in Europe for the last 30 years. And they've sung at various venues throughout the United States. They performed at Carnegie Hall. They sung with the Rolling Stones and just a whole venue of different entertainment. Uh, they're quite well known throughout the United States. So if you love choral music and you want to hear an excellent choir that you'd have to pay a lot of money to hear, if you paid for it, please come Sunday, uh, December the 9th, 7 p.m. at New Beginnings Church on the corner of uh, West I and L Street. Um, we'll also be featuring this year uh, Tom Faria's concert choir to sing some songs at the end with um, uh, San Jose uh, State University Choir. Um, and I understand, um, I just found out recently that Pacheco has a choir as well. So in the upcoming years, I'll be working with uh, their choir director to see if we can make arrangements for Pacheco High School to have the same experience that Mr. Faria's choir is going to have. So again, uh, it's free to the public, and um, it's all been paid for, so just in com come enjoy a wonderful Christmas concert. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Well, <coughs> congratulations, Mr. Freya. Uh, Mr. Freya and I started together uh, 12 years ago on this council as council members, and, uh, and I have to tell you that um, we've been through a lot of changes. The, uh, the some that, that, uh, that impacted this town in such a way that we didn't have money at that time. And we've been through the high times, we've been through the very low times, and now we're making a comeback. And we're making a comeback thanks to staff and council with everyone working together. And in order to accomplish things, you accomplish things as a team. And the five people up here are individuals, but they are team members for the good of Los Banos. And all of us have different opinions on what's for the good of Los Banos, but the main concern is the good of Los Banos. That's why we ran, and uh, frankly, that's why we want to serve. So in government, when you study government, you're going to see sides of government that are selfishness sides of government, and you're going to see very generous sides of government where 
individuals truly, truly care about what's happening to us locally, in the county, in the state, and the federal system. You may not always agree, but that's what you have to do is you have to weed out after training with your, your teachers, you have to weed out and analyze the decisions that are made. So I'm really glad you're here tonight and please come back. And if you have any questions about things that are said, then we can either come to your classroom or uh, you can ask staff of, uh, of, uh, of items that were discussed tonight and everyone will be happy to, to uh, get back to you to, to help you learn and to help us see your opinions sometimes as to how you feel about the decisions that are made up here. So with that, um, Mr. Freya, congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. 12 years together, 12 years together. Mr. Freya was also my music teacher when I was principal of the junior high school. So we've had a very long career together and a very successful one. So I, I, I appreciate your friendship and your guidance. Brett, welcome. Yeah, we, uh, we don't rearrange seats, so you get the former members council seat. And uh, so when we started, uh, when I started, I was on that end, and Mr. Faria has been on that end for, for 12 years. So, uh, so that, that's how it's uh, been done. And we really appreciate uh, you running. Uh, you fought uh, uh, a, a good race, a good, good campaign, and were successful. And so now you're here on this council. So if we can be of any guidance to you or the staff, they will gladly, gladly do it. Thank you. Thank you. Kiwanis dinner. We're, uh, oh, and Kim and, uh, Kim, where's Kim Tomas? Is she here tonight? Does she leave? Kim, there you are. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, I forgot, I forgot, to, I yeah. forgot to, to say that. Thank you. <laughs> He's uh, hiding back there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did I miss anyone? And Lucy. Yes, I wanted to look and forget about that. Yeah. 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 These, these, these two women received 99 point something percent of the vote. Uh, no one ran against them, but they received 99 percent of the vote. Okay? And that's always a good sign if no one runs against you and you receive that. <laughs> that's a real good sign. <laughs> Okay, Kiwanis dinner on the 24th, very important function. The Kiwanis for 28 years have donated their time and their money to feed the less fortunate and people who need a meal on Christmas Eve. Uh, it's gonna be at fire station number one on 7th Street. If you can show up to help, uh, you can uh, please do so. Uh, it's always a great event. This community is so giving and is so giving of the individuals that, that really need a help up. Not a handout, a help up. So uh, this is just one function uh, that, uh, that happens during that time. Uh, our Rotary Club gives away coats uh, for kids and Angel Tree. Uh, we just had an, an event last night, Empty Bowls, where we, uh, I don't know, did anyone work at Empty Bowls last night? Were you guys here? Okay, so we had a lot of Interact students who work from the high school, and, uh, and, and we raise money, and then that money goes to the pastors uh, to help out with those that are homeless or, or in need of, of canned food. Uh, the police department, canned food drive. Uh, you know, there is so much giving going on at Christmas time, and this is a very proud community. And... For those of you who think there are things that need to be improved, help us out. And I will tell you that all the time. Help us out. The Measure H. Uh, I just want to just spend just a little bit about that because uh, I don't know how many of you, uh, how many of you as seniors voted this year? Raise your hands. One person? <laughs> Is everyone else 17? <laughs> okay, two. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so Measure H passed, and it needed a simple majority, which means 50 plus one vote, 50% plus one vote. 
It passed by 66.13%. Is that about right? Okay, 66.13%, which, which is excellent. That money is going to raise $2.5 million a year. A half a penny raises $2.5 million a year in this community. And what we're going to do is, at a minimum, we're going to be hiring seven new police officers, two fire and one dispatcher to route the calls for emergency services and to help guide this town and also to protect it. Public safety is of the paramount importance in this community. I will tell you, you have to feel safe and you have to have running water, public works, and you have to have the right stuff flowing downhill. Because you want to get the people mad at you, that'll get them mad right away. Everything else goes out the window if you don't have running water. So Measure H is, is a real booster for us in this community. Because money's going to go to uh, uh, recreation. Money's going to go to public safety. And of that public safety, there are various forms of how we can improve uh, streets and roads uh, uh, can also be included in this. And public safety can be included to how to make our town safer. Maybe we could have a camera reading system, cameras uh, in the downtown or throughout Los Vanos, a network of systems. Maybe uh, we could have license plate readers to make sure that the bad guys coming through town will get caught. Um, there, there, there are just a lot of things that we can do, but we couldn't do those things and we couldn't afford all these amenities without the Measure H. And so I just want to thank the community. Thank you, thank you for seeing fit to pass Measure H and giving us more dollars in order to work with our community. Very important. And, I, and believe me, one thing was asked about Measure H. There's no guarantee the money goes into general fund. Well, I'm here tonight to tell you that there was a plan for Measure H. Every person on this council, staff and council members, and now Council Member Jones, we have a plan for that money. And that's the plan that we're going to follow. We have an oversight committee. That oversight committee is going to be looking over our shoulder to see that we spend that money correctly. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for passing Measure H. And with that, uh, don't forget about the Christmas Eve dinner, uh, December 24th, Kiwanis, and the Christmas Eve parade that's coming up. Um, all these things in Los Vanos, and thank you for coming this evening. Meeting adjourned at 8.43. Why, for measure H? Much broader than it should. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was doing good. Oh, wait.